Hello and welcome to this video on the impossible village and race that we know as Smurfs. Smurfs are of course small blue humanoid like creatures. No, other small blue humanoid like creatures. They are meant to be fantastical, live in mushrooms and their village is supposedly protected by a magical field that prevents anyone who is not a resident from finding it. The average Smurf is about 7.5 centimeters or 3 inches tall. They have a pear-shaped body that is it's wider at the bottom and narrow at the top. Their head has an overall oval shape. Their legs are supposedly incredibly springy allowing them to jump very high. They also have a tail of some sort. They can run 3 meters per second or 10.8 kilometers an hour. Remember, they're just over 7.5 centimeters tall, and 100 centimeters makes a meter, and 1000 meters makes a kilometer. They can jump up to 30 centimeters, or four times their own height. Apart from the general physiological features that we've mentioned, there is one other defining feature. Nearly every Smurf is a male. This is important as it is said that Smurfs do not reproduce sexually. Rather, they are supposedly delivered by a stork and left in the village. We'll explore this later as mystical and magical origins or children's stories are not a foundation for a species longevity. The male Smurf is pretty much entirely bald and has little to no hair. As they age, they do begin to develop facial hair beards, moustaches or sideburns. These only occur once they hit something around 400 years of age. This would indicate that 400 is entering quite advanced years. Supposedly their blue skin provides a cure for every human ailment, and they can be used to turn base metals into gold. Female Smurfs are weird. There are very few of them to start with. There's also a strong case to be made that those that do exist are most likely magical creations rather than actual Smurfs that were born. This raises the question of how Smurfs continue to exist and why female Smurfs are even created and why they would have an impact on male Smurfs. If sexual reproduction is not possible, this is a strong argument that Smurfs can not only reproduce sexually, but have a drive to do so, which is why Smurfette is supposedly one of the characters brought in by Gargamel to distract and occupy the male Smurf's attention. With this, let's look at the members of Smurf Village. If we take all of the comics, cartoons and movies and put every character together, there are 100 Smurfs. 112 if we include the other Smurf villages that we know of. 99 of the main village residents are male. Then there is Smurfette, the only female Smurf. The majority of Smurfs tend to age slower than humans, and thus they will live longer than humans. A Smurf will reach 100 years of age and will then be considered an adult. They do however have a lower level of maturity and their mental state is closer to someone between their mid-teens and early twenties. Very rarely would a Smurf survive 1000 years of age, but it does happen. This means it is possible for a resident of Smurf village to live to 1000 years, although it seems likely far fewer years would be the average. If they follow the normal rules of a biological organism, then they would have far more health issues, fewer abilities to recover from harm, and replace lost cells as they age. This means the older Smurf has the less ability to contribute to the village than the much younger Smurfs do. This last point is especially important. If we do not consider the story of a stork bringing in new Smurfs, then we must assume some sort of sexual reproduction is necessary. Older Smurf village residents would struggle more to reproduce. This would also mean it is unlikely older female Smurfs like Smurf Willow or Nanny Smurf would be able to reproduce. 
The awkward moment is when we remind you that Smurf Village has only one female who would be of an age to reproduce. This is a problem, not just for the reasons you are thinking of. Rather, if there is only one possible mother, even with 99 possible fathers, the genetic diversity that is produced would be tiny. It would be like the royal family tree, where everybody is at best a first cousin, if not more closely related. This increases the risk of hereditary defects and mutations. Each inbred generation compounds that problem exponentially. If we take the current population distribution of 99 males and one female as true for every generation, it will not take very long for it to go from every Smurf being a cousin to every Smurf being a sibling or even more closely related. Assuming the first generation is completely genetically unique, we can start from a clean slate. The first generation becomes a father or not related. The next generation is all siblings, as Smurfette is a common parent to all children in the first generation. Every generation is 100 more Smurfs, 99 males and 1 female. Each generation cannot interbreed, but up to a point, each prior generation that is not directly related can. This means at most 98 generations to reach complete inbreeding with everybody related. Again, this is simply based on a simple distribution of number of people over time. You can see this in the chart here. Each generation gets 1% closer to completely related. That number may also be overly optimistic. It depends on when male and female Smurfs begin to experience reproductive difficulties, how long gestation is, and time between offspring. We know that 500 years or thereabouts is when they begin to enter into significantly older age. Therefore, if we assume 400 years, or roughly a little bit below that extreme, we can find that there is a similar function to what happens in humans. Humans around age 40 will enter menopause. This is also called middle age and has various other names. We can also assume something similar for male Smurfs. Both will taper off drastically around the same time. There is also an issue about when they can begin to conceive. If 100 years old is an adult, then we can count from there. That leaves about 300 years of fertile time. If gestation and time before another Smurf can be conceived is around 2 years, that leaves 300 years. 300 years means a maximum of 150 possible children. If every opportunity is used, every child is carried to birth, and there are no significant issues in things like fertility. This is an unenviable example of The Handmaid's Tale. We have so far assumed that as each generation occurs, the number of offspring is constant. It would only take one unfortunate mutation, and that is the end. If the number of males decreased, as is likely from inbreeding, the number of generations will also decrease. If it is a single female Smurf in that generation, it is the end of the line. From there on, things can only tighten like a noose. This makes female Smurfs the limiting factor. With that in mind, after the first generation is gone, and that being the only genetically unique generation, you hit a wall. Between Generation 1 and 2, there is a 50% relation. The mother is common to all of them, and all of them have a common mother, but the father may be different between each offspring. A common mother and unique father. Between Generation 2, there is between a 50 and 75% relationship similarity, as each is a sibling but has a different father, if they are lucky. No matter how many times you mix and match between each successive generation, the number of possible combinations decreases, 
so long as there can be no immediate ancestor. All of this has assumed several things. The first is that this is the first generation that is inbred. What about if it is the 2nd, 10th, 50th, 99th? That means our model could be substantially shorter than described. It's also taken the assumption of the most optimal reproduction process being followed, assuming that this is the first generation as well. If only one male and one female reproduce, as with species that have an alpha hierarchy, you will find problems occur much, much sooner. As little as one generation, but likely several more. There is another aspect to this. Mitochondrial DNA. That is something that's always going to be inherited from the mother. That would mean every generation has the same mitochondrial DNA being passed down. It does not matter if they are a male or a female. If there is some sort of defect associated with mitochondrial DNA, both sexes will pick it up, but only the females will pass it on to their children. Mitochondrial DNA can only be inherited from the mother. There is, really, only one bottleneck as a result, and this creates that bottleneck in generation 1. It could lead to many mitochondrial genetic disorders that involve all the systems in the body, things like the brain, muscles, heart, liver, nerves, and so on, being carried on from one generation to the next, and just getting more and more common as time goes on. As is obvious, the Smurf village is living on no small amount of borrowed time, and the debt is coming due very soon. They can only keep going for so long without there being very serious deformities or other deleterious mutations that build up within their population. It does raise questions, though. Where are they getting these new children from if they're not produced via sexual reproduction? Are the Smurfs kidnapping children from somewhere else and bringing them in? Is there some other, rather, dark aspect to the Smurfs that's being covered up by a rather nice children's fairy tale? Thank you for watching this video. If you have found it interesting, consider liking, sharing, and subscribing. Please post any comments, questions, or suggestions that you have below.